Thanks, Sam. Good morning, Sam. everyone. Um, I'm Nina Desange. I am the Chief Technology and Strategy Officer at Vanguard Properties in San Francisco. And we're going to be talking about secure MLS functions. I think many of you know uh, about the Rapitoni cyber attack, but I think what you, I hope that you'll learn from this session is really about how teamwork and innovation help drive confidence in an, in an MLS and a vendor partner. So um, I think I'm going to start by having each of you introduce yourselves and tell us what the one thing you did when you learned that MLS was going to be down for an extended period of time. Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Jay Pepper Martins. I'm the CTO at the San Francisco Association. Um, I've been there for about 10 years now. Um, I started off just looking at the MLS alone, it, it's, its technology, and now I actually run and manage all the technical services for the association and the MLS. Um, what happened the, the day the system went offline was a real gut check. Uh, literally, our stomachs hit the floor. You can all imagine, many of you in this room were affected. So we had to do two things. We had to look at uh, what, what did we still have that worked. And so that was an inventory of what tools still functioned. And the other thing we had to do is look at what tasks agents were going to have to be able to do in the short term, and at the time we were hoping very short term, in order to just sort of stay afloat. So uh, it was two inventories, right? What products did we still have? What did those do? And what did agents need to be able to do in order to still conduct business? And we thought it would be short. Uh, it ended up being a little longer than short. I'm Eileen Romito, VP of Sales and Operations at Zenlist. Um, you know, a few days into the outage was when we realized it was going to be longer than just a few days. Yeah. And at that point, we had already begun working together. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I had two thoughts at that point in time. One was, how is Rapitoni doing? I mean, we were under a lot of stress on our end. So for them, I was just thinking it must be tenfold. So I'd reached out to them. And, my contact over there, Scott, if you're in the room, hi, I hope you're, mm -hmm. you're okay now. But um, that was my first thought. My second thought was who else is affected by this? Because we were operating in a number of other MLSs as well, um, providing service to brokers and agents. So kind of went through our MLS inventory to identify which ones were affected by the outage and reached out to them. And our offer to them at that time was same as what we had offered to you guys, which was if you want us to, give us the thumbs up. We will pro provide immediate access to all of your data. We'll flip the switch so that your agents can access Endless at no cost to them. So um, that outreach was a couple of days after the outage first started. Uh, Jake Thompson, uh, CTO of Zenlist. And I, I guess for me, the, oh, there, there's my mic. <laughs> Got to point the right direction. Um, for me, initially it was just, oh, and our data feeds went offline. That happens a lot. Um, and as we kind of got into it and realized it was a couple things and some back and forth with SFAR, realizing, oh, okay, maybe this is something more like oh, someone dropped a database table and doesn't have a backup or you know, an intern pushed the wrong button. And then we hit that weekend of like, this is going to be an outage. Yeah, the Friday. Yeah, yeah. that Friday. And you know, for me, um, Tom, who's our, our CEO, just had a quick conversation, which was, we don't know what we can do for these guys, but let's do whatever we can just to get through this, because it's going to be a mess. But yeah, that, that was, uh, it was an interesting time. What did you do, Nina? What happened to you on that week? Uh, I went to the local dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. There wasn't a blunt big enough. Um, so um, <laughs> let's talk about, I think it, it would benefit the audience uh, to, to hear kind of just the overall timeline in terms sure. of date. So Jay, do you want to kind of go over that? And then we'll talk about how Zenli where Zenlist was at in their partnership with SFAR so that we build that kind of base of uh, all of the other things that came after that. Sounds good. So what you're looking at here is what Jake was talking about a second ago. It shows that the data feeds all went offline, what was it, about like 7 o'clock in the morning yeah, on that yeah. Wednesday? So yeah, one day in August. Um, it was the day before we'd had a staff event where we were all celebrating the fact that um, like a staff appreciation day. We're like, yeah, everything's rocking right now. We've got great plans. The rest of the year is going to be great. Come into the work in the morning. And nothing's on. Oh, that's curious, isn't it? So the day goes on, and we realize, oh, this is not coming back on today. But maybe it's short term, right? So there we are on Friday the 11th, still no system. And that's when we're having that conversation. And you're telling us what you can do. What we had done, as I mentioned before, was we did an inventory of what tools we still had 
Uh, so we were looking at you know, who's got an API, who's using data dictionary, what functions can be done in which applications and where. So that was that, like, the 11th was crazy. Uh, some of us were brainstorming and working over the weekend. It was on the 19th, several days later, a full week later, when um, we were working with, with uh, the technical team at Rapitoni. They showed us that, yes, we're in a state where we can bring you back online next week. Um, but we didn't know for sure. There were still some things that had to happen right in order for that to be true. So we didn't tell our members on the 19th, hey, the MLS is for sure going to be up next week. We just we didn't know for sure. But on the 21st, looking at things with Rapitoni, they definitely had us in a state where we knew we would be able to turn it back on for you and for all the other members in San Francisco. Um, so on the 23rd, we came back online. So that was two weeks of downtime. Um, and it didn't feel like two weeks. Uh, it felt like a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, there were some weird conspiracies floating around, like we did this on purpose, or we were trying to force the industry to move forward or in a direction. No, I canceled vacations. You guys canceled he, vacations. He was on vacation for one of our Zoom yeah, meetings. Yeah, it was, just, it yeah, was, it was bonkers. <laughs> yeah. So um, it, it's just funny how um, you know different people have different perspectives, I guess is where I was going yeah, with that. Yeah, for sure. Um, but we managed a lot of volume. Um, so over the course of that two weeks, we did that other inventory, which was what do agents need to do right now or else you know, we're in big trouble. So things like open houses. You know, someone had one booked for the Thursday, the whatever that was, the 10th, but there was no way to take it down. We had distributed this data to you know, however many places, portals, and data shares, and it said the house was going to be open on the weekend or that Thursday, and so the agent had to go and had to hold the open even though they had canceled it or the seller didn't want to do it. So those were the things we had to look at is what were the things that we absolutely needed to get done. Um, and uh, Zenlist was able to say, hey, we had already been building lots of these functions, right? Yeah. So how that's, far were we down that path? Yeah, I think that, that, that that's uh, interesting to kind of talk about, about where you guys were in the partnership and then how that kind of came together. So Jake, do you want to argue? You want to well, talk about the partnership? We can, we can yeah. bring, maybe give some yeah. context yeah. for what the partnership was. So in early 2021, we um, formed a partnership with SFAR to offer a mobile access option for SFAR agents to access MLS data. And um, part of that was going to be building also ad edit for mm -hmm. listings. Right. Um, so we had been working with them since the beginning of 2023 to build this out and have it ready. The, the plan had initially been to launch after the summer. Yeah, I mean, that's you know, right. We yeah. were going to launch this yeah. right around when this all happened, to be honest. Yeah. The timing was wild. Um, but we had to make some decisions about how that would be built, what that would look like. And yeah. those decisions ended up being key to yeah, so being able to help. So, so as a company, we had started a listing input project prior to our, our in, engagement with SFAR. Um, and knowing that front end of choice and different ways to get listings into MLSs or working with brokerages and managing their listings was something that we saw was going to happen in the industry. Um, so when we decided to build that, we stepped back and said, OK, what's the right way to build this? What's a data model to use? What's whatever? And, and we have been involved with Rezo, and you know, the, the obvious choice was, well, data dictionary solves that issue for us. Let's make this just a standard thing. Um, and then we also stepped back and said, okay, let's, you know, how do we build this? Okay, if we build it as its own thing and we, we're a consumer of our own system, well, we're also talking web API. So we said, let's, we're gonna build this using data dictionary, web API, we need business rules. Okay, there was a draft business rules. Okay, so we use that too. So that's how we decided to build this even before we started working with SFAR. That's why when they came along looking for kind of a front end of choice for mobile listing input, we, we kind of were ready. Um, and, and those decisions really helped us later to be able to get them online and distributing data quickly during yeah. this outage. Distributing data was one of the big things. Yeah. I mentioned a second ago that like the open house problem, right, and editing your listing. But if you just edit your listing in a system and it doesn't go anywhere, I mean, as a brokerage, you know, that's basically useless. Yeah, and useless. I mean, I think, you know, from the agent level, uh, you know, the ad edit in Zenlist to provide accurate data, not just to the client, but to the agent community, was uh, pretty significant in the sense that uh, almost within a few days, agents had real live information on open houses, on new listings. Tours. Tours. Yeah. Um, and I think this came in phases, right, in the sense that uh, the first piece was how do we get agents to be able to edit the data in the system? And then you had to solve the tour problem, right? Mm -hmm. In San Francisco, we tour on Tuesdays. There are, the tours are done in 
time segments, and, um, and so there was that. And then that third piece was the syndication, and I think what I'm, and I think the audience is really interested, is how did that transpire? What was the communication between Zenlist, SFAR, and then there were some other people that kind of stepped in to help in that last syndication piece. So okay. I think I'll throw that to Jake and then. I, I'll, yeah. I'll let you let Jake, because I think okay. his story of like, the people you pulled together were huge. And I know Taylor, Tyler, Taylor. T Taylor's here, I think. Um, from Zilla Group, where is he? Yeah. Is he? Where is he, is he in the room? Somewhere. Anyway, Somewhere. He's Somewhere around. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So the, it goes back to the philosophy we had that first couple of days, which was, you know, we took the inventories, but we also decided how we were going to conduct ourselves. And we were going to do a thing shields down. So yeah. instead of, you know, we wanted the data to be transferred in a secure way, but we had to be able to trust certain people that would help us solve specific problems very quickly. And you cannot do that if you're guarding every email that you send you're couching it in language that is like protectionist. So we had to like, you know, really honestly communicate about what the problems really were, the deficiencies that we had. Um, Taylor stepped up from Zillow and you were able to get on yeah. a call with him. And we pulled some people together in a Slack channel um, and just like cross company communication like that, I don't think is super common. I think it's becoming more common. Um, but so anyway, there we are in Slack having every hour conversations about this doesn't work quite right. Okay, well we could fix this. Hey, if we make this quick adjustment, we speak Rezo, we all speak data dictionary. Well, if we just make some adjustments, we can do something really quickly. And you guys did all that work. Yeah. I, I just put you all in the Yeah, it was really, I mean, with, with the, help. the fact that we got everyone together quickly, and again, those walls came down, open Slack channel. We had already had an open Slack channel with you yeah. guys. You know, we had always had open communication with you. Um, being able to bring in Zillow Group to that and say, okay, we need to solve a syndication problem here um, because these agents need their listings to be seen by eyes. They need to let people know that tours are happening. Mm -hmm. And we were able, you know, back to the early decisions we made, um, part of the conversation was, okay, so how do we get, we're, we're Zenless, we don't build an MLS system, we're not a RET server, we're not a, we're not a Rezo web API server. Well, come to find out we work because we had just decided to do that. Um, so we we're able to work with them quickly and say, what, what's a great way to get the data to you guys? Oh, we have this web API server that's standard. Can we use it? Yes. And, if, you know, it was probably, an hour, two hour conversation, and mm -hmm. straight into implementation. I think that was that Monday, and we started right away knowing that we needed to get this done essentially before Thursday-ish, yeah. so that agents had enough time to get all their listings in, to get all those tours uh, you know, distributed out, and, and, be, and to be seen by their, uh, their all the, the But it was buyers. only possible because we all spoke a common language. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, and, and we had th amazing support from, from the Zenless support team. They were, you guys were working 16 hours a day or something. Easily, <laughs> easily. Crazy. Thank you to my support team um, if you're watching this yeah, recording. Sure. You yeah. guys saved everybody. But, um, <laughs> but that's why having the MLS go offline was so devastating is because you lose these core functions and you sure find out really fast what matters in your MLS system. It's not some report that gets generated by 2% yes. of your members. That does not matter. That's what matters right there. It's the live activities. Mm -hmm. These agents have to go out and show homes. It's the data distribution ended up being one of the chief pieces. And so we couldn't have done it without having some common language between. And, and the brokerage speaks it a little bit and now we speak it as MLS has invented. Yeah, even with the bridge system, there was you guys had yeah. your, your data being fed to the bridge system. There was business logic rules in there yeah. that were based off of Rezo standard fields. Like, can this be seen? Can we distribute this or not? And again, just because we're all speaking the same language, we were able to go from one system to the other, start feeding it data, and know that those were going to apply and, and the right things were going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's talk about the kind of success of that, right? Because the messaging goes out, the agents kind of jump on board. What was done in terms of the actual numbers. And I think you have a slide. I, I did, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, first of all, I want to preface this answer with one thing, which is this did not make everybody happy. We're not yeah. up here telling you that we solved everyone's problems and like it was roses and rainbows and stuff. It <laughs> was not. It was absolutely agony. A lot of angry agents that you, you had to sort out. We had to support them too. We took a lot of phone calls. We just had to do something. And so this is what we did. We did this, which was uh, two broker tours organized, 700 listings were edited to the tune of about 1.1 billion in inventory value. Like that's, those are real numbers and that helped a few people, at least maybe not everybody, um, still keep doing business. Which mm -hmm. is pretty crazy. Yeah, and I mean, support wise, we started the process internally for our company. Um, again, not knowing the full story, we didn't know where this was going. So we, we didn't, didn't either. Right, so no. I mean, we were figuring this out pulling, you know, training materials last minute to get it out. 
and you know, starting with support, which is, that's our first line of defense, okay? So right. we need to start adding tours. We had no mechanism to do that. We didn't, you know, just call support, we'll figure out how to get in the database and get it out there. So, um, and that was, that was kind of a three-step, a three-phase process for open houses and broker tours. First, we had support tickets coming in from agents saying, hey, I want an open house on X date. And we created a JIRA ticket. Our engineers just went in and did it. We did, um, I think, 170 of them manually that way. Mm -hmm. um, that was then transitioned to our, literally overnight, yeah. Brian, if you're here, hours, I think it was you and was, Jeff, yeah. whoever it was, <laughs> built into our internal admin system the ability for our support agents to enter those open houses themselves. They wouldn't have to bug the developers. Um, they worked themselves out of a job on that one, but I think they were happy to not yeah, have to yeah. do that anymore. And you know, then the third part was allowing agents to do it themselves yeah. right through the Zenlist interface, and that, that alleviated a what lot. What made that possible was that you already had, like Nina mentioned a second ago, that we have very specific broker tour time slots that are tied to district numbers. And so if the partner systems, like when we were looking at what still worked and what could we use, very few of the partner systems understood our districts that you guys tour yeah. in. Uh, that, that you people tour in, and so you did. You already had consumed all of our districts, and your support team understood what our agents were looking yeah. for. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll so. congratulate ourselves a little bit on that, because we do like to do everything standard. We're big proponents of using data dictionary, but we also pride ourselves to be hyper-local. We understand the local MLS's nuances, and we want to support those. And we were in a place where yeah. that was there and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, I mentioned this to these guys last night, that, you know, having to deal with the agents and the boots on the ground, how challenging and difficult that was to get them, steer them in that direction. And the fact that there were so many of you that worked overtime, that really thought outside of the box to create real solutions for the agents on the ground, uh, it was immensely appreciated. And, and I think that everyone can learn from that teamwork and that partnership and thinking outside of the box to make it work for the agent on the ground. Um, I know that it, it's uh, politically sometimes can be very challenging to think outside of the box and say, we're gonna do this and we're gonna go this way. Um, but I'm really glad that you did and it really did help the agents on the ground. So thank you both um, Zenless and the entire team and the entire team at SFAR too. So um, thank you all, I hope you guys learned something. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.